Hi, I'm Mark Messina. I have a PhD in nutrition and I've been researching soy foods and their health effects for approximately 30 years. There's a lot of confusion about the health effects of soy, unfortunately, and in my opinion, after very diligently studying the research, it's very clear that soy foods can make an important contribution to overall health. They are very nutritious and they help to reduce the risk of a number of chronic diseases. There are a number of myths or misunderstandings about soy food, so I'd like to take it just a couple of minutes to clarify some of those. The biggest misunderstanding or concern about soy is that it may be contraindicated for women with breast cancer. However, the clinical and epidemiologic evidence is very clear and overwhelmingly shows that soy foods can be safely consumed by women with breast cancer. In fact, a considerable amount of prospective epidemiologic data indicate that women who consume soy after diagnosis of their disease are actually less likely to suffer recurrence and less likely to die of breast cancer. Another concern is that soy may feminize men, and this is very unfortunate because soy may help to reduce the risk of prostate cancer and it also lowers risk of heart disease, so men should be consuming soy. Clinical studies show that soy doesn't lower testosterone levels in men, soy doesn't raise estrogen levels in men, and soy doesn't adversely affect sperm or semen, and it's a good choice uh, of protein for building muscle in response to resistance exercise. So there are a lot of reasons for men to be consuming soy. Another concern is that soy may uh, adversely affect thyroid function. Again, the data indicate that that is not the case. In fact, just recently, the European Food Safety Authority concluded that the isoflavones in soy, which are the subject of controversy, do not adversely affect thyroid function in postmenopausal women. So there's really no reason to be fearful of consuming soy. Soy does cause allergy in a small number of people, but the prevalence of soy allergy is much less than the prevalence of allergy to peanuts or the prevalence of allergy uh, to cow's milk protein. So I recommend that people consume about uh, two servings of soy per day, and that would be for adults and maybe children try to consume at least one serving of soy per day. And one of the most important reasons for children to consume soy, and that is at least for girls to consume soy, is because the evidence indicates that consuming as little as one serving of soy per day during the childhood and or during the teenage years may reduce risk of breast cancer by as much as 25 to 50 percent. So there's a lot of research on soy indicating that it can make an important contribution to an overall healthy diet and in specific cases it may help to reduce the risk of a number of different chronic diseases. So there has been a lot of research looking at the effects of soy protein as a source of protein for building muscle in response to resistance exercise. And these studies show that soy is quite capable of, of stimulating muscle protein synthesis. Now it is lower in leucine than a protein such as whey, but as long as you consume a little bit of extra soy protein and the leucine intake is sufficient to stimulate what is called mTOR, um, then you're able to build muscle in response to resistance exercise. And there are a number of studies showing that after a 12-week resistance exercise program, there's actually no difference in strength between those who consume soy and those who consume whey protein. And again, soy does not reduce testosterone levels, so it's a good choice for those individuals who want to build muscle. And in fact, one study showed that a combination of milk protein and soy protein was actually better at building uh, muscle or stimulating muscle protein synthesis than milk protein alone. There are a number of different ways to incorporate soy into the market but I tend to promote the whole soy foods. These are the traditional Asian soy foods such as tofu, tempeh, soy milk made from whole soybeans. Uh, another good product is that edamame, which is the green soybeans. Now there are more uh, 
refined or processed forms of soy that are used to make uh, burgers and maybe energy bars. And those products are fine, they're very convenient, they're a good source of protein, but when you consume the whole soybean, you're getting a little bit more than just the protein. You're getting omega-3 fatty acids, you're getting fiber in some cases, you're getting oligosaccharides, and you're getting a higher concentration of isoflavones. So I think like all foods, you want to emphasize whole soy foods whenever possible.